I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. All right, it is now 7 p.m. and welcome to the Monday, April 9th, 2018 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Please be advised this meeting is being made available through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Channel 15. Any comments made in open session will be recorded for future airing. The first scheduled appointment for tonight is Suzanne Buchanan of the Historic New England Commission. Suzanne? but I'm going to defer to my supervisor, Chris Okay. Hello, thank you. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, look forward to thank you for your uh, time tonight. Uh, my name is Carissa DeMore. I am the team leader for Preservation Services, and I'm here on behalf of Historic New England. Uh, we are the oldest and largest regional preservation organization in the country. Uh, we were founded in 1910 to preserve New England heritage uh, for future generations, and we own and operate 37 public historic sites uh, all around New England uh, in that mission. But we have also accepted and held uh, preservation restrictions uh, protecting private properties uh, since 1981, and so that's what I'm here to talk to you about tonight. Uh, I'm here regarding a uh, possible preservation restriction on the Recumbent's Maboon House at 290 Elm Street. The property is historically significant and it is very intact and merits protection. Uh, so it was constructed in, uh, we think, about 1739 by Recumbent's Maboon. Uh, and as you, I'm sure you know, the Maboon family was fairly prominent in Pembroke in, in its early days, uh, and several ancestral homes remain. There's the John Maboon House at 248 Water Street. Uh, there's also a house at 300 High Street uh, associated with the Maboon family. Uh, but the recumbent's Maboon House is actually significant um, in town history all the way through the 20th century. Uh, so also on the property uh, that we're talking about is a, a foundation of an early 20th century ice house, uh, two 19th century barns, and the west barn of the two was used by the East Pembroke Fire Company No. 4 um, through 1930. And then uh, Irene Lee, you may know the name, um, managed the little post office building that's closest to the road at the property um, from about 1950 to when it was closed down in 1972. So the preservation restriction that we're talking about putting on the property um, would protect all of those buildings, the exteriors of all of those buildings, and then also significant interior features of the house. Uh, things like historic plaster, woodwork, uh, early door hardware, fireplaces. Uh, and it would also protect the post boxes that remain inside that little post office, uh, which are really great. Um, so once it's recorded, this private legal agreement would be binding on all future owners. Um, they would all have to play by the same rules. Um, so it protects the property permanently. Uh, Historic New England is, is very experienced in managing this kind of restriction. Uh, we have 106 of them currently all across New England. Uh, we have five full-time staff that administer the program. And we visit each property in the program at least once a year. Uh, we're there to work with owners to be a resource to them. Uh, we have over 100 years of experience uh, maintaining historic properties ourselves. But we want to pass that knowledge on uh, and ensure that local history is, is preserved. Uh, so because these restrictions are perpetual, we also aid owners in uh, future sales of the property. This one, for instance, has been on the market uh, with the idea that this preservation restriction would be put in place when it closes. Uh, and there's currently a sale lined up with a closing date scheduled for May 4th, which is why we're here tonight. Uh, the way that the law is uh, set up in Massachusetts, 
Um, chapter 184, Section 32, is what allows us to put this kind of restriction in place. And uh, it requires that in order for this restriction to be permanent, we have to get the approval of the municipality and of the state. Um, so the State Historical Commission has already reviewed the restriction, and they are prepared to approve it, uh, provided that you will all do tonight. And when we met with the Historical Commission on September 21st last year, uh, they also voted uh, to recommend to you all uh, that you approve it tonight. Um, so we're here uh, tonight to respectfully request the board's approval uh, of a preservation restriction on the Green House at 290 Elm Street. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I have a question. Um, my understanding of the agreement and the documentation that you gave us, um, if we pass this tonight, uh, any future owners doing anything to the buildings themselves would have to get your approval. If they're uh, making they, changes to a protective yeah, feature. They, uh, they could improve things, but it would be under your direction in order to preserve the buildings themselves. Um, now, if we vote for this, we have two, two different choices here. We cannot vote for it. And what happens then? Is, that, is, is this already in force? It has not been recorded yet, no. Okay. Um, if we were to record the agreement without your approval, uh, it would have to be re-recorded in 20 years and every 30 years thereafter. Okay. Uh, I live uh, close to that house, and uh, I go by it a, a lot, and it should be admired, and the history of that building, I believe, should be preserved for the future. Um, so I would, unless I hear something else from my fellow selectmen, I, I think I would be in favor of this. But I, I did have one additional question. Um, if uh, any future owner, should we pass this, does that affect in any way their real estate taxes that they pay to the town of Pembroke? It's a, it's a decision that is up to the town. Uh, it's certainly not something that historically would controls. Uh, the only uh, aspect of the preservation restriction that could influence the, the tax foundation is that the restriction prohibits subdivision, um, so it couldn't be divided into two buildable lots, say. Uh, so there are towns who have uh, reduced the property tax uh, as a result of that. Other towns choose not to account for their preservation restriction when they value property. It's really a decision for the town. You take uh, an interest in the property, but not a fee simple interest. Um, you're taking just an easement, and that will block the subdivision, as you say. It'll block any further use of it um, as a commercial entity. And not necessarily. No. no. Uh, it's, it will limit what a future owner, uh, the, the kinds of changes that a future owner might Make. It doesn't necessarily prohibit a commercial use as long as that use was compatible with uh, the preservation of the building. Okay. Can I go to the um, expert and bother Libby Bates for a minute and um, tell us why this is a good idea? Well, as you know, uh, 38 a member of the Historical Commission, uh, obviously one of our goals is to preserve. Uh, not only the history of the town, but the infrastructure of that history. In the past year, we've lost three 18th century houses. And every time one of them comes down, it's just a little piece of our history torn away. Um, in terms of, and we discussed this at our, se at our September meeting, um, <clears throat> in concept, of course, the Historical Commission would support putting a preservation restriction on this house. I mean, why wouldn't we? We've put them on the Quaker Meeting House. We have them on the King's Highway Inn. And every 
project approved spending CPA funds is required to have a preservation restriction on it. That's been a little lax, but they're supposed to be there. So they are a good thing. And I would, I would certainly support it. We talked about it that night. I think there was um, no formal finding because the owners very graciously invited people to go over and take a look at them for themselves. I wasn't able to go, but I've driven by the house for decades, so I know which house it is. Um, and I would certainly um, think at, at that time in September, I was, I, I was maybe incorrectly under the impression that they were seeking funding to record uh, the uh, preservation restriction, which we didn't have the funds available to us to do that. Um, but uh, and the only other thing I might add is, and this is putting on my board of assessors hat, these restrictions don't necessarily uh, give a tax credit to the property. There's nothing in Mass General Law that allows us to do that. Um, it's, uh, I think there are federal credits possibly, but local credits, no. So it would be assessed it's, it's that it's full. based on, you know, what it would sell for. Okay. Yeah. So. so. And that would be with respect taken for the um, easement, taking that into consideration. Right. When they, when they sell a piece of real estate, they do a title search, and any liens, permanent um, or otherwise, uh, come up in the report, and they, you know, the buyer, had a buyer and or seller have to either, if they're a temporary lien, like a mortgage or something like that, they want those satisfied. Agriculture, chapter land liens, we put those on real estate. They can only, that, those properties can only be transferred, and they do get a credit, um, as you well know, and they get it locally, the uh, open space, farmland, agriculture, horticulture. Um, but there's payback on that too. But the point I, I guess I'm trying to make is that there's nothing out of the gate which is going to lower their taxes because of this restriction. If going forward, potential buyers find uh, the restriction maybe too restrictive and they can't get the price they want, that's what's going to drive the value on that piece of real estate. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> I have another question. The, uh, in this agreement that would be in force, should we vote to do that, to certify it, uh, the grantor uh, is really held to high standards as far as insurance, liability coverage, very, very restrictive and probably costly. Um, I understood you to say that this property may be going to be closed. We have, we have a potential buyer for this property. Have they been apprised of this agreement? Absolutely, yes. They're okay with the agreement? Yes. I, can I just make a comment? Sure. Beth Dwyer, President of the Historic Society, and I recently became aware of this organization and their uh, program at a meeting at the back roads of South Shore, and I wholeheartedly approve what's happening here in this piece of property. Uh, I shared all their all your information at our annual meeting, and I think this is fantastic. What they're doing. If there are no other questions from the board, I would uh, move that the board vote to certify the preservation restricting restriction agreement, and it will remain in perpetuity. I'll second that based on the conversations with two people I trust imminently. So. 
All righty, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so it passes unanimously. Thanks for coming in. Can I make an announcement? Oh, sorry for that. We actually do an announcement tonight, and we will be taking care of that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to announce that the Pembroke Council on Aging is in need of volunteers for the Meals on Wheels program, and also uh, to volunteer to drive patients for medical appointments. Uh, they will not be going to Boston or any long distance. Um, a gas mileage payment is also offered for these services. And the person may be eligible for the tax work off program. And if you are interested in getting more information, please call the Council on Aging at 781-294-8220. Thank you. All right. Moving on, we have another scheduled plan with the Pembroke Historical Society. The Assistant DPW Director regarding tree and debris cleanup at the Thomas Redding Park and Herring Run prior to the annual fish fry. Hi. Evening. You've asked the same name. <laughs> Ed, did you have something on it? Yeah, I'll play uh, Assistant DPW Director tonight. Um, we've got uh, some quotes for the cleanup of the Herring Run Park, and if you haven't been there, the damage done by a series of storms is, is, is uh, overwhelming. Um, I believe there's a total of maybe 19 trees that, uh, that have come down on the property. Uh, it makes it very unsafe for anybody to even be in the park, let alone have an event such as the annual fish fry, which is scheduled for May the 4th? Six. Six, I'm sorry. Um, so time is of the essence if we're going to try to get that cleaned up. Uh, Scott Glavin, the Assistant DPW Director, uh, met with, uh, with me today, and uh, we have a price tag of approximately five to $6,000 to clear it up, which, believe it or not, is less than what we thought it would be. Um, so um, uh, I need to uh, chat with uh, Mike Buckley, town accountant, about how we want to do that. Um, Scott seems to think that the uh, contractors that we'll hire uh, will need a little assistance in crossing the bridge and because of bringing their equipment over that the bridge that crosses the Herring Run. Um, but that we, in hauling all the, uh, the wood out of there, uh, getting rid of the stumps, um, he believes that it would probably take two to three weeks. So we would probably need to um, uh, do something sooner rather than later. I mean, we don't want to push it up to, you know, the, the week before the fish fry. So... Um, so right now, that's that's the price tag, um, and uh, whether it's using Camp Pembroke funds or or any available funds that we have as part of the cleanup for the town, and that process is going to take a long time and cost a lot of money. When you talk about um, cleaning all the debris from the Monroe Street area, and in addition to all the streets in town where people have taken all the debris and put it on the curbside. So, but uh, right now the, the goal was to have a number for the Historic Society um, and, uh, and for the Board of Selectmen. And uh, that's pretty much what the price tag is going to be to clear the herring run. Okay. I wonder, I know it, it is certainly very expensive and, and you're right, that's a better price than I I was thinking right. any of us thought it might be. Is there the possibility of at least trimming some of those trees and putting up stakes and caution sign? I do have volunteers that would be willing to come out to clean debris. And two of the smaller trees that are in the center of the park, there's one right in the heavy run, and then there's another one, a smaller one, right. in the park. And we would be willing to undertake that. 
Right. And if the DPW, so that we could remove that time is off of the essence, that, right. that deadline. And if they could do some trimming and then put up the caution tape, and then we could set up our tables in such a way that we could rearrange how we set up our. Well, we're going to need to put up caution tape anyway. Yeah. Um, because we found that there were some individuals that are in the park and we didn't want to suffer any uh, any liability questions you know with that information so um, you know that's you know what I had to report that it's going to cost between five and six thousand dollars to clear all the, that debris out of the out of the park and what was the length of time two to three weeks. estimated two to three so we got about Four or five weeks before the fish fry? Yeah. 27 days. 27 days. 27 days. We are not meeting next week. Correct. Do you have a recommendation? I don't think the board has any arguments about doing this. We really need to do it. Right. And uh, five or six thousand is. Five or six thousand, but right. um, if you have an idea that we may have that money in the Camp Pembroke Fund or some other source <laughs> that Mike Buckley will right. come up with, um, I I would not have a problem voting to spend that kind of money to clean up that park. It, it has to be done anyway. Correct. So we just have a deadline. So we need to move fast. And if you go out there to the site and see the damage that's been done, I know I was kidding Sabrina about it, and she took a gander at it and was shocked about the, the amount of uh, damage that's done. So uh, I, would, uh, I would appreciate that, and, I, and Mr. Buckley and I would work on a, a means of uh, funding that project. All right, very good, very important. So thank you for coming in. Well, thank think. you very much. Really appreciate it. Forty second year that we've been having fish fry. Truly appreciate your all your effort. Well, thank the you. fish fry is so much a part of the town of Pembroke. It has become that, that. You're right. Yes, absolutely. It's not just a fundraiser for the society. It has become an, a, such a special event, and so the effort that you're making here is really appreciated by all of us you know even if we pushed it back the date back that still doesn't we still got to clean the site up right. yeah. so that's not yeah. going away i mean you you get the public safety issue as well that you, you're better off dealing with it now than you know dealing with it six weeks from now if somebody you know has a tree fall on them god forbid or something right so i think if we get at it sooner rather than later and the price is better than I would have thought, too. Yeah, absolutely. Should we like, do we need a vote on this? Or do you? I would think we do it. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the Board of Selectmen authorize the town administrator to work with the town accountant to arrive at a solution on where we're going to find five or six thousand dollars to fix the pack, remove the trees. Second. All right, I give a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so pass it unanimously. Thank you very much. And again, if you need any volunteers to sure. the call. Oh. Okay, Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. All righty, we're going to go ahead and move on to the board action items. And the first one is to consider a request for the use of the town roads for the Hussey family annual Huss dog jog on July 14th. Well, Mr. Chairman, this has been going on for a number of years, and the Hussey family has um, always treated the town well and vice versa. Uh, I would move to allow the request with the approval of the uh, police chief. Second. All right, motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well. So it passes unanimously. Does anybody have anything under old business tonight? Hearing 
none. Go ahead and move on to the town administrator's report. Uh, nothing at this time, Mr. Chairman. All right. I'm going to go on to the Ask the Selectman section. I see a member of the audience. Is there something you wanted to ask us tonight? Okay. Does anybody else have anything for Ask the Selectman? Okay, moving on to new business. Anything under new business? Tonight? Mr. Chairman, um, I want to congratulate Noah Gordon, who's our newest Eagle Scout. Uh, I spoke at his court of honor yesterday, and it was um, quite a crowd. And um, he did a terrific job of clearing um, brush and uh, debris along the uh, Bay Circuit Trail. And um, he's our, I think, it's our 57th or something like that um, uh, Eagle Scout from Pembroke. So they're an accomplished troop. Certainly are. All right, moving on to the upcoming issues. So on April 23rd at 7 p.m., UMass Present will be here with a long-range forecasting model regarding revenues and expenditures. Also on April 23rd, we have the signing of the town meeting warrants. April 30th will be the advisory committee finance presentation. On May 8th, the annual town meeting will take place, and on May 12th, the annual town election. There will be no meeting next Monday, April 16th, 2018, in observance of Patriots Day. Mr. Chairman, I just had a quick question, if I may. On the April 23rd date, the signing of the town meeting warrants, I address this to Mr. Thorne. Um, we haven't uh, yet seen the final language on uh, an article concerning the town manager. Correct. Are we going to have that on the 23rd, and when we sign the warrants, we'll be able to discuss that? I believe their meeting, I believe that committee's meeting Wednesday night, and hopefully they will have finalized any changes that they made, and as soon as we get that from the committee, we'll forward it to you folks. Okay. That's this Wednesday they're going to meet? Correct. Thank you. All right, so the... Town meeting warrants to be finalized by April 23rd. So and finally, the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen is April 23rd, 2018. We don't have any need for executive session tonight, do we? No, sir. So no executive session? Session? Mr. Chairman, I would move that the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Vote aye as well. So it passes unanimously. This meeting is concluded. Thank you for tuning in.